Hey guys, it's Rob here from Dodge and Fusky. I'm going to be doing a very simple introduction video. Um, in fact, I'm going to be doing three, uh, showing you how you can use Looperator by Sugarbytes in your tunes. Um, I'm going to be using a couple of very simple examples to kind of show you uh, how you might be using it in a contemporary uh, kind of dance production environment. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to be going through some of the basic and more advanced features and how I think you might have some fun using it. Uh, I'm going to be using some very basic kind of tunes that I've made from uh, from our sample pack label, Total Samples. I've mostly used the Virtual Riot pack, uh, which is available from that label. Um, yeah, just to give you an idea. So I'm going to just quickly play through a very simple track that I've made uh, using a few instances of Looperator. And then I'm going to go through and show you different ways that I've used it. Uh, yeah, so I don't think anybody's going to be winning Tune of the Award, uh, the Tune of the Year awards for that anytime soon. Um, but it should give you an idea when I explain what I've done now of uh, how you could use it. So very firstly, I'm going to show you what I've done on the main bass line, which is just a very simple sample that I've repeated. And I've got this instance of Looperator running on it here. using a few different sounds that we'll get into late, uh, later on in the video. Um, so the two core modes that Looperator can run in is host mode and manual mode. Now this one's running on host mode, so depending on the, res the kind of grid resolution you have it set on, it'll just track your sequencer here. Uh, you can also see the audio that's coming into it on the grid here, which I think is really neat, and it shows you which kind of slice will be processed here, so you can get a really good idea, rather than having to guess where you're going to be placing uh, your, your points, you can kind of see it very visually, which I think is really good. Um, the other mode you can have it running on is the manual mode, which is MIDI triggered. So I've got another instance here of Looper, which is just running on the master bus. And you can see when there's a MIDI trigger here, which I've got set to to uh, to trigger the sequence of restarting, uh, we're going to go into that a little bit more depth later. Uh, it will just re-trigger this pattern here. So, so I could move that wherever I wanted. So it's really cool for getting kind of vinyl stop effects, just putting one-off effects, um, and as you'll see later, doing custom filter patterns, a bit like a kind of. Um, like a pattern designer you get in some synthesizers, like a performer type thing. So yeah, uh, I'm sure you can see there's quite a lot of scope for creativity there. Um, I'm going to move into some very basic editing and some randomization to give you an idea of what you can do with it next. Uh, so here I just have a very boring drum loop, you know, nothing particularly special, just does some dubstep drums. So you can see it's learning where the audio comes in here. So you can see there's my kicks, my snares. And I'm just going to, to begin with, I'm just going to randomise it so you can get an idea. And you can keep hitting random buttons as long as you want. Okay, I'm going to do some very basic, um, I'm going to initialise it now and I'm going to do some very basic editing manually just to give you an idea of the different functionality that you have. Um, so there's there's all sorts of different effects, um, which there's far too many to go through here. There's kind of all these looping envelopes. We'll go into custom filtering and custom design of the sound in, in, the, in the next video, because we're doing a few of them. Uh, but very quickly, let's say, for example, I wanted to put a loop in here and make it do it four times. I can just kind of drag, drag in bits where I want. I can also use the mouse wheel to scroll through stuff. I can also drag to extend. And I could then put like a filter over on here, like a vowel filter, maybe put on uh, some distortion there, and then on this snare here, have a kind of a tape stop. So as you can imagine, it's awesome if you make quite glitchy music in particular. I mean, it's great for using effects, you know, so subtly, things like tape stops and the odd like thing is very usable, especially on the master bus or on a, a big drum bus uh, in, all, in all different types of music. Um, but yeah, hope that gives you an idea of how we get started. Uh, the next videos we're going to move into doing custom effects, uh, you know, sort of doing custom LFOs, um, and we're going to be looking at how you can use it live triggered via MIDI.